The tip for this week is something I've discussed before, but I'm going to discuss another part of it, and that is how to measure. There are two times when you really need to measure things, and one is for gauge, which this is a gauge swatch, and the other is when you're working and you need to see if it's time to stop the ribbing or whatever, and we'll talk first about this. When you're measuring for gauge, it is important that you are measuring only full rows and full stitches. Notice that I have these markers placed. It's very easy to see on the selvages that the selvages are not the same size as a stitch, so you do not want to measure those. And to measure these, I would make sure that I am exactly at the start in between the stitches and I am exactly at the end. And the width of this particular swatch is five inches. Now you want to make sure with your ruler, notice that my ruler extends a little past. I don't want to start from the end of my ruler. I want to start when I, uh, where the first measurement is. And that may sound obvious, but I found that it's not. Now rows are a bit trickier. You would never want to include your cast on row. And this swatch was cast on using the long tail method, which produces your first row of stitches. And if you look at this, you can see that that first row of stitches is a bit smaller. That is not the same size as the stitch above it. So I would not want to measure that as a, a row of stitches or my gauge could be wrong. Now I have placed my marker in that truncated row of stitches. That is where I'm going to start measuring from. I'm going to place my ruler right at the bottom of the row above the marker and I'm going to measure up to the top. Now notice at the top I have placed my marker in the last row. The last row above the below the um, bind off edge is also a bit truncated. So I'm going to measure right up to there. Now in this case the measurement for the length of this swatch is three and seven eighths, which if I were to convert that to a decimal would be 3.875, and I would be able to do my gauge calculation. So you wanna make sure that your measurements match your stitch and rows exactly. If I measure from here, it's not going to be accurate. Now the other time when you are measuring is when you're measuring your actual work to do something, say stop your uh, ribbing to begin the regular stitches or to increase or decrease or whatever or the length of the piece. It's going to tell you to keep working until the piece measures X, whatever X is. Now in this case you do want to include the very bottom of your work because this is the length of my garment. It's going to be that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay, place my ruler at the very bottom of the piece knitting, no knitting, and I'm going to measure right up to the stitches on the needle. Do not include the stitches on the needle. If I were to bind off, they are going to be folded over. It's not going to be included in the length, and in this case, if I am going to end my ribbing after one inch, the next row Would not, is not ribbed. It's where my pattern is beginning. So if I include the stitches on my needle, whoops, not doing metric, my measurements would be wrong. I want to measure right from the bottom to right below the knitting needle. And that's a tip for the week.